Hey y'all, this is A.L. Thick Madame, and this is the recap review for 61st Street. So this episode started out with Moses unfortunately being booked and in jail. He up in there and he has to go and saddle up with his new bunkmate. And he go up in there, they gave him his roll toilet paper, all this stuff or whatever. Like you have certain things that you come in and you get, you got to keep up with it. So then, you know, he introduced himself to his bunkmate, cellmate, whatever. And when he told him that his name was Moses, he was like, welcome to the promised land. Walked out. So then this other random dude who was just sitting outside in another area, just the common area, I guess is what you can call it. He gonna roll up to him and say, hey, how you doing? You know, you know how to play Bones and all this other stuff. He was like, yeah, I know how to play, but I ain't on that. I'm good. So then eventually he was like, man, you gonna have to stop being like that. It, it ain't like all like how what you see on the TV and in the movies and all that stuff. Like, it's cool as long as you stay to yourself. Duh, 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 duh. Over here lying to his face. So he was like, all right, let me go ahead and make friends real quick. Soon as he walked out the thing, some random, another random person rolled up in there, took all the stuff he just brought in there. He was like, hey, man, what you doing with my stuff? He was like, uh, you'll be all right. He was like, I know you ain't going to try to fight me for it. Ended up taking his stuff. I was like, no, you didn't. He was like, man, what you doing with my stuff? He was like, if you really think this is your stuff, you can take it, right? Pull it out of shake. I said, no. No. Don't do it. Then everybody in there laughed at him because, yet again, being green, I'm not going to believe y'all. I don't know none of y'all. I don't know none of y'all. So now he's looking crazy because you ain't got no toilet paper. You ain't got your toothbrush. You ain't got your blanket. And it's finna be cold up in there at nighttime. So now you got to reevaluate your whole life because you sat up there and believed some dummies. So anyway, uh, Franklin over here, and he is just breaking down left and right after hearing about this diagnosis. Like, he, y'all, he be taking me out. Like, he be having me going through. Like, he be full out weeping. And sobbing, like it's just oh my, who would try? it be really touching me? Now, as a cancer survivor myself, it I feel like that's where it kind of <sighs> takes it in overdrive for me, and that's why I be feeling it a little bit harder. Even though this man is clearly acting, but still, I'm just like, man, come on now, come on. So anyway, um, yeah, it's it's a mess. Uh, this other guy came in and rolled up on him, on, um, uh, Moses and was like, look, you know, you're going to need to get with the faction, which is this gang or whatever, um, if you want to survive. And so he was like, no, nah, man, ain't on that. Go on about your business. He was like, well, come on and holler at me if you, well, when you change your mind. And I'm like, child, like when you find out the history of it, y'all, I have done and part of me is like, how do you not even know this? But we'll get there. So anyway, he's ended up he ended up meeting up with the lawyer, his lawyer, who is Franklin. They talking, and he's trying to understand is law and justice the same thing? And he was like, the law says you have to stop when a police officer tells you to stop. The law says you can't resist resisting by a police officer. There is no self. There's no such thing as self-defense when it comes to a police officer saying that they want to take you into custody. So it's like, he need to just understand that he made all the wrong moves, even though he was not trying to kill nobody. <clears throat> he was like, I have a question for you. Why did you run when all this stuff went down? He was like, I was just trying to get away. He was like, look, you thought the cop was going to kill you. That's why. Like, it's just an inherent fight or flight. It is what it is. But it's sad that you have this thought of, oh, my gosh, I'm scared for my life because these people going to kill me because I'm black. And they just see me as a threat because I'm black. Like, that's ultimately what this was. And he was just like, even though I know I ain't got to do with this situation, I'm finna run. So, anyway... Rufus, his mama, Tutu, or whatever his name, his little street name is, rolled up to the police station, went off and was like, how dare y'all? I know y'all shot my son. Ain't nobody talking about it. I need to talk to somebody about to set it off. So then the sergeant rolled up and she was like, I want to know what's going on and what happened to my son because ain't nobody doing nothing about it, whatever, whatever. He done told, he done told her your son was dealing drugs. 
He was a known member of a street gang. Um, there was a drug sweep, all this other stuff going on. So she was like, okay, it's other boys be on the block all hours of the day. And my son out there, and, uh, and my son the only one get killed? Like, then ain't, the math ain't mathing. And so they was like, look, he had his weapon raised. He was ordered to drop it, and he didn't. He shot it, and he was shot to protect the other police officers. So, like I told y'all, he has this way of talking like he is just this, oh, not just this calming, whatever. And I'm just like, you are so two-faced. Like, I can't. I really can't. I can't do it. So, he even, like, was trying to talk to Moses' mama. And I was just like, girl, ignore him. Like, I was even ignoring him in that moment because I'm like, you're a lie. So, she's trying to go see Moses. She is there, essentially, you know, she was there as moral support for her before she went to go see Moses. So she going for her visitation with Moses and she sees somebody else come in. She was like, um, excuse me. Um, I'm here to see Moses Johnson. She see who it is. And this is why I said what I said earlier, because the person who actually came was her child's father who was locked up in there. And he is over this faction foolishness. Um, he goes by speak. Now, y'all, I have seen this man in several things. And every time I see him, he just reminds me of Suge Knight. And I just be so tired in my spirit. And I just, I really can't. And I'm like, you didn't even have to open your mouth for me to know who you were, sir. That's how done I already was before this man even announced who he was on this show. <sighs> so she ended up talking to him because she pretty much didn't have a choice. He'd have picked up the phone and was like, all right, pick up the phone now. And so she was like, uh, what do you want? And basically told her that he has extended an olive branch and the way that she's acting all emotional in this moment, he always knew that he still held a special place in her heart for him and all of this. And so she was like, no, it ain't even like that. Like you doing the most. And so she was like, yeah, I'm not telling my son that he needs to join a gang that put you in here. What you been going six, seven, eight years. Uh, I mean, why would I tell my son to join something? That has his father in this same predicament. That don't even make no sense. The math ain't mathing yet again. So he was like, yeah, like I said, I ain't never stopped loving my family. And I have extended an olive branch. She said, F you. And went on by her business. Politely walked off. I was like, child, you done went, whoa. So then there was this dude who knew Moses from the neighborhood. And was like, man, this is the fastest dude, at least in this city. That I know. And so it was another dude in there that race too. So they, you know, specialize in certain ones. I think somebody do the 200 and somebody do the 400 or something like that. And so they was like, oh, why don't we do this? And then you run back and forth five times and whoever win, that's who, you know, the fastest in here. So they go back and forth and Moses is losing terribly at first. I was like, what is going on? And um, he ended up winning in the end. And so everybody mad because the person who was on the other side is a part of the faction, if I'm not mistaken, or one of these other gangs. Well, immediately, uh, old boy starts punching him and beating him down and did the most. And I'm like, you're mad because you lost? You lost. Like, you you still lost. You're beating him up because you lost, though. Like, you still lost, sir. Like, <laughs> what you thought you was doing? You didn't accomplish anything except you still lost. But go off, though. So, of course, old boy done rolled up trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, they're talking to him then told him that he got beat up or whatever and so he was like man you got to get me out of here there's too much going on and he you know while he's trying to go to his client his son he done texted his son and told him um i'm behind schedule but you know what to do whatever whatever and so right when he left out of school there was a woman who saw him and you could tell like i said that something with special needs this person um she had like a um a vehicle that was made for handicap accessibility and all of that stuff. So he going up the stairs to get on the train. I'm talking about he ain't even made it to the on to the first train yet. The drop this phone. I said, Lord, here we go. This is already a precursor to terrible things to come. I already see it on. I already see the hand right on the wall. So he's very happy. He's into his music, doing what he normally do. Well, he hasn't heard the announcement that's going on, which is that they are rerouting traffic and all of this because there's a, a lot of heavy police presence somewhere. So like I said, he ain't hit this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this boy finna be lost on terrible. Somebody please do something. So 
we just have to see what happens. So then we see his mama. She's gonna, you know, she's getting ready to talk before like a bigger congregation this time. Like the crowd keeps getting larger and larger. And so they're talking to her. And, you know, she's, like I said, her points are going up. She's becoming more and more fair, favorable. And I'm just like, okay. Well, the son, like I said, then got lost. He done sat up here. And like I told y'all before in another video, it was to the point where they told him 50 steps this way, 200 steps that way. Like he really didn't count out these steps. And when he got to the doorstep of a brownstone, and it was a group of white people sitting on the steps. This boy started panicking like, wait a minute. So he kind of turned around, started walking. Somebody walked by and greeted him, but he was kind of like, um, okay. Then he saw a police car and really panicked. So then he kind of, you know, sprinted off a little bit and ran into an alley and hid behind a trash can or beside a trash can. So he kept doing that. Like whenever he felt like he might be okay, he would get up and go, you know, and he's about to go out on his own and he'll see a group of people and he'll go back in there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, somebody please do something. So anyway, Moses ended up meeting up with his lawyer, who is Franklin, and he's in his feelings. Because like I said, he didn't just got beat down. And so he over here trying to tell him, you can't show emotions in here, whatever, whatever. And he was like, it's okay, son. Ain't nobody seeing you. Can't nobody see you while you in here. They were, you know, facing away from the door. Like the guards couldn't even see him. And so... He ended up um, crying. So then he was asking him, had he heard of a certain person who, you know, was running back in the day and all this. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the person who we've seen on commercials before where he was running. He pulled a hamstring and his daddy came out of the crowd and basically ran, you know, hobbled with him to cross the finish line. So, yeah, um, this is the part that I found very interesting that I told y'all about before that we find out later on. Back in the day, he used to run track. He ran track in high school and in college. Like, he said he was really good at it. And I was like, wait a minute, you done went off? Okay. Okay, then. So, yeah, like, he was like, I, I know a lot about all of this. I understand. So then, like, he's becoming emotional and he's trying to help him to, you know, kind of get through this moment and that they're trying to win this case, right? And so, like, he up on him. Like, he really up on him. Like, you know you ain't supposed to have no contact. So then you hear the guard like kind of knock on the window like three, four times. You know, he'll give a, a few seconds to see if they're going to, you know, separate. Kept knocking again. I was like, oh my gosh, they're going to bust in there and bust him up. They're going to get in with the billy club if he don't stop. So, you know, eventually they stopped and then, you know, the lawyer left out. We end up seeing Franklin because he like, uh-uh, some ain't right. I think I know what's going on here because how they know where to be at. How did these people know to be Johnny on the spot? So he went over to the mama house and basically I guess she, I guess he told them don't say nothing. So they're looking at him trying to figure out why he's tearing the house apart. He's sweeping the house looking for bugs, looking for a wire, looking for whatever, looking for a bug. Tell me why he looked everywhere and the one place he thought about, he said, wait a minute, let me look up under here. It was like an ottoman or something. Looked up under that ottoman where it had kind of been a little fabric on it, was torn and they had stuck something right up under there. And that's how they were able to hear and understand and know what was going on and who to follow and, you know, what all was going on. So he made a point to say what they was going to say about all of this and that they are going to do what they need to do and that they are going to go big. And then he ended up destroying it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so crazy. Like these people are trash. Oh my gosh. So yeah, y'all, the son, he's listening to his music, trying to stay calm. And then his little thing died. And I forgot what you call it. Like I said, I forgot what it's called. I ain't seen one of them in a while, but anyway, and you know, he couldn't listen to music no more. So he tried to get up and go out again. And, um, every time he go out, like I said, he sees people and he becomes kind of spooked. And then he go back in his little hiding place. And I'm like, Lord, don't nobody have time. So we see the partner and the sergeant riding through the night doing the least. And I'm like, child, you see these guys soliciting. And they're like beating on buckets and stuff like that. Y'all know that's a form of entertainment in a lot of these cities. And so he sat up there and gave them money. And he was like, you know, some crimes, you know, 
it's a victimless crime. So I'll look the other way when they do that. But what this guy did, no, we're not looking the other way. And I'm like, but you don't have any concrete evidence to prove that he did anything. So why do you keep saying this? Like you just know for a fact that this is what it was. Like, stop. So anyway, Moses in jail and the guy who keeps approaching him and told him, you a cop killer. Ain't nobody trying to hear nothing you talking about. Don't nobody care. You need to join this faction or it's going to be real rough for you up in here. If you want to stay alive, you need to go ahead and join this. So I don't know why you're trying to act like you, you can just do what you need to do. You can't just think you could just be in here and just survive because you, you, like that's not what's going to happen. So I'm like, child, it's a mess. Well, while the sergeant and the uh, partner are riding through the city, and they talking, and the sergeant was like, yeah, I think I saw some a couple of streets back, a couple of blocks back. I'm going to turn around. And I'm like, you seeing a little bit too good in your life. Like, I can't. So down the alley, there were guys who were playing, like, um, dice. They were rolling dice, shooting dice or whatever, and he see the dice game going on. He frisked everybody. One guy who looked like he might be the oldest one in the whole group, he had like a handgun on him. He was like, yeah, I don't think you have a permit to carry. Like, well, I don't, I don't think you had that. What's going on here? He talking about gambling is a misdemeanor and um, gambling is a misdemeanor and the handgun situation is a whole lot more. So they're trying to figure out who... Who put the money on the ground? Who's money? Because somebody was up. Like, somebody was about to win 400 or something dollars at least. Like, before the game stopped, somebody was up $400. And so he ended up holding the other guy hostage, you know, pretty much for a moment. Let everybody else go. So he was like, okay, so, you know, you need to talk to me. What's going on? Whose money's on the ground? Whose gun does this belong to? He was like, the, the gun belongs to the same person whose money that belongs to. And he was like, yeah, that's a smart answer. Because he still didn't, you know, incriminate himself. So he told him to kick rocks. They ended up taking the money and they went and spent the money at a bar. And I was just like, I can't, whatever. So it's nighttime. The sun finally come on out of the of hiding. Because at this point, it's like the, the street lights that came on. Like you got to figure out how you're going to get home. So he started walking and then, like, he is walking, walking, and then he gets literally in the middle of a street. He don't know which way to go. Some random old white lady look out the window and see him standing there, like, literally looking confused and politely pick up her house phone and call the police. I said, here we go. What are we finna do? Kill this boy? Please tell me y'all ain't finna kill this boy because ain't nobody got time for this. So they had to call the police. Meanwhile, the partner that rolled up to the, uh, the, the widow's house and so she has on one of her husband's shirts and so she was like i wear his shirts sometimes they still smell like him whatever whatever so then she she was like you don't have anything to remember him by right and he was like no nothing like that so she stood up and went up to him and was like really close to him and was like here and you know just let him smell the shirt and I was like, please tell me y'all not about to have sex. Like, don't nobody have time. They were about to have a moment, but then she went on about her business and was like, yeah, you too drunk to drive. You can go in Mike's room and, and be on the pull-out couch or on the bed or something. And she stopped herself. Or they stopped the situation from happening, but she basically stopped it. And I was like, child, don't nobody have time for this. Y'all y'all be, everybody be doing too much. And I'm sick and tired. <clears throat> So then we end up seeing Joshua, who is Moses' brother. So he getting ready to go to a party or whatever. And so his mama was like, yeah, I know you're trying to get ready for some little girl. You need to pull your pants up, whatever, whatever. And so she told him to be safe because he's still trying to live life or whatever. And at this point, uh, that's not what he doing. Not really. He, he trying to be a part of his life so he can get, you know, close to his brother. Try to get some money because he keeps overhearing grown people's conversations and decides he wants to enter, you know, in, um, what is the word? What is wrong with me? I don't know why. I literally had the word right there, y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Insert. He wanted to insert himself in the situation. This is a grown folks situation. You are a child. Stay in a child's place. So he over here, he got invited by that random thug who was over, who was like, I guess, one of the soldiers. <laughs> the one that's like over the soldiers that are on the block. 
that, you know, he gets handed down instructions from the main person, the big boss. And he told him, you need to meet me over here on, on this day and this time. And that's where he was going. So he was like, well, the only way you can get on is if you talk to him. And if he don't have a good first impression of you, it ain't going to work. So he saw his car. He was like, oh, man, that's a nice car. He was like, look, you got to chill. You got to calm down. So he ended up going over to the car, get in the car, and they go for a drive. And so I'm like, Lord, here we go. Please don't let it be no foolishness. So they talking. The song that was playing, I'm like, I feel like I know this song. And I am going to Shazam it later because I meant to Shazam it when I saw it. But I forgot. And I'm glad that I, I thought about this. So I'm going to go back to this part before I'm done so I can Shazam it because I meant to Shazam it later. But yeah, they having a little drive and talk trying to get a better understanding of who he is. So anyway... Oh boy, that sat up here and he in the room. Instead of him going to sleep because he can't sleep, he over here trying to listen to the wire. And he's looking for more stuff. And so the wife is like creeping around the house because she can't sleep either. And so she hear her husband's voice. So she was like, I heard Michael or whatever the husband's name was. And so she was like, I want to hear it. And he was like, it was a wire. Your husband was wearing a wire that day, whatever, whatever. And so she was like, I want to hear it. So essentially he ends up letting her hear the wire. Then we end up seeing, like I said before, this helpful call the police. So the police then showed up. While his mama is at the function talking to people, the campaign manager or whoever this woman is to her came up to her and like whispered something to her ear and she just ran out of everybody like, wait a minute, what's wrong? What's going on? I'm talking about the police came. All he saw was the lights. They showed the situation of fall where they told him, hands, we need to see your hands. I'm talking about they got out the car on twenty. They, they weren't on 10, they was on 20. And he was just like, he kind of like backed up the steps and was like, oh, okay. And then he like slowly sat down and repeated everything his daddy said. And he just sat on his hands and they just started yelling, we need to see your hands, do it. And they raised their gun up and he ended up doing his hands like this and he started rocking. I said, please, Lord, don't shoot this child up. Please don't do it. So like I said, the mama ended up running out the, out the thing. And so at this point, we don't know if he dead or alive. And I'm like, come on now. So Joshua... Moses' brother is with the boss, and he sees a meetup, and he was like, "What Brannigan doing out here?" I think that's what the um, sergeant's name is. He was like, "I know that cop," and so he didn't know this man was a cop. He was like, "Oh, so the faction is in, in bed with um in bed with this person." So he's the rival gang member. So he was looking at him like, "Look, this is our competition," and he talking to this dude. He making the think. He over here thinking that he a random person. He was like, oh, no, he in bed with the faction. So now the mob, I mean, not the mob, <laughs> the uh, uh, gang boss over here confused and he over here getting game, not even realizing that this was the best decision he made by even taking up this meeting with this boy because now he know that that's a cop and that he is in bed with him. So, yeah. Um. So then Franklin then got home and he looking like, wait a minute, baby, all these lights going on. At the house, his wife sitting down looking crazy. And the way she looking got me thinking this child dead. And I'm like, somebody please do something. All the police officers in the house looking at him when he come in the door. And she just looking disgusted and just everything in between. But anyway, y'all, that was the episode. Y'all, they was tearing my nerves up. And I was like, somebody please do something. Like, y'all knew y'all was wrong to end this episode without letting us know whether or not this child died. And then when they showed the preview for the next time, I was like, I gotta prepare my heart before I watch this because I ain't got time. But anyway, thank y'all so much for tuning in to my recap review on 61st Street. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. Give this video a thumbs up and let's talk about it down in the comment section. Bye!